Hello everyone, everyone and welcome back to another unboxing slash review. Today we have the Count himself, King of the Cavern, Edmund Dantes. So, if you don't know who this is, this is obviously Edmund Dantes, the uh, Count of Monte Cristo. There's a huge revenge story that he's pretty much based off on. I haven't really seen anything personally. I know there's a couple of animes about it, but it's not really dived into much in any of the fate... Um, Fate anime, sadly, just because he's not in any of them. But I believe there was an event at some point that kind of, you know, told his story a bit. Because they keep mentioning it within the main story, and I'm like, huh? Who? What? What's a Edmund Dantes? Uh, like, he appeared in the final singularity of part one as well, and I'm like, wait, who is this dude? I have no idea. But uh, I did actually manage to get him in the GSSR for... Uh, 2020 for NA, so if you haven't seen it already, go check out that video as well. But yeah, so this is him, and uh, yeah, I've managed to get to know him a bit more. I really do like his character and the way he plays, and of course he goes with the Scotty system, so he's pretty much been... He's probably my best servant just because of how good his attack is and all of that. Sadly, he does die fairly quickly if you don't keep him alive, and he's fighting against pretty much everything without getting any um any kind of damage buff or boost but thankfully he did get his np uh rank up quest recently so we've got that his np's doing a bit more damage i i'm on the fence if i should go for him again because he's coming up so by the time this video goes out summer three will be a few days in and he will be getting his rate up so Maybe I'll go roll for him to get MP2 just to get that extra bit of damage, but he's been fine so far, so maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just go for Summer BB instead, just because uh, the eSport memes, uh, as I've been told. I've been told she's not that great unless you're really going for the eSport stuff. Um, but uh, the more I look at it, I started to like a character, so I might just roll for her based on that alone. But that is... All the instructions for Dante's looks like he's got a lot to him. Of course, this is the deluxe version. There is a another version that doesn't come with the the yellow eye. I think that's it, and maybe a couple of other pieces. So if you can try get the deluxe version, unless you don't care for anything that comes with it. But it's there are two out there. Just so you know, let's try and get all this tape off. Be gone. Now, let's get a better angle as well. Alright. Goodbye. So much tape. Let's get that off. Okay, what do we have in here? We've got his hat. Which I will pull out. Iconic hat. Very cool. Very Dante's. We've got a couple extra hands here, not sure what they're for, we'll figure it out later. The usual base bit and arm and extra neck bit, nothing too crazy. All expected as usual. Now let's take a look at the actual figure. Mm -hmm. Dante's is basically just a bro, like he's always there for you. He's got your back. Alright. Let's pull your head off, actually. And he, I think he's his character was designed by the artist for Danganronpa. Ronpa. Whatever it is. Uh, I have watched it, personally. Uh, the anime is very confusing. I know it's based on the games. But, uh, like, later on, I think they skipped part two of the games. And just went into part three. Which is a shame. So it was a little confusing towards the end, but I watched summaries of it and I sort of got it, but if you get the chance, watch the anime, then play the games. Especially 2, I've heard 2 is just great. Alright, here we have him. He's got a cool eye, which I haven't really noticed. But yeah, if you're if you're looking at him and you're like, huh, doesn't this look like Kameda? Yep, yeah, that's, that's why, it's because it's designed by the same character artist. Usually uh, in battle he'll be turned around 
Um, it doesn't really work as well in Nendroid form because A, you'll have the giant base bit here. But uh, I guess he'd probably look a little like this with his scarf flowing a bit more over there. His, his neck scarf, neck tie even. What's the little symbol on this thing? Let's see if we can get a focus. Uh, almost. I don't know why, but that seems very familiar. I feel like I've seen that somewhere. Oh well. Someone can tell me in the comments down below. Okay, let's get that back. Of course, we have his iconic cape as well that he gets later on as he goes through his ascension. I think this was his final ascension that he gets the cape. Well, at least the third ascension. Of course, we've got that, that interesting symbol over here again. Let's see if we can get a focus. There we go. Whatever it means. Um, I feel like his cape is alive. The way they've drawn the cape, it looks like the cape is alive. I do not know. Tell me in the comments. But yep, the symbol is also on his back. Maybe it's just the count symbol or something. Then we have this faceplate here. Crazy looking one. Nice teeth. Then we have his even crazier looking one. This is the one that the yellow eye thing, the yellow eye glowy bit goes with. All right. We've got his demonic arm thing, which also looks pretty awesome. It looks black in the pictures, but it's actually blue, which is very interesting. I did not expect that. I was expecting a black one, but it looks pretty awesome. It's like a flaming blue demonic hand thing. Don't know how else to describe it. It's neat. Uh, how did it go in though? Like, like, aha. We've got a hand holding a hat. We've got a leg out. We've got coffee cup and uh, like a little saucepan as well. And that is pretty much it for what's in the box. So let's get on to some poses. All right, here is our first pose for Dante's. He's just enjoying his morning cup of joe before he heads out to, you know, save the world. The usual kind of stuff. Get, get senpai masters back, you know. Just, just an everyday day for Edmund Dante's. Gonna pop up from the shadows and save, save everything at the last moment and uh, not explain who he is because uh, everyone who didn't play Fake Grand Order from a certain point have no idea who he is. Why won't you show me the event or where he's from? Unless he was... Because, no, he couldn't have been from part 1.5 because he showed up at the end of the final singularity. So, oh well. Who knows? I won't spoil anything any further. But, yeah. Very cool pose. Nice little thing. Uh, not my favorite, but it it's still nice. Anyway, let's move on to some of the more interesting ones. All right, here's our next pose for Dante's. He's got his evil eye thing going on. Uh, honestly, I don't really use Dante's for anything other than his NP. He just kind of NP loops for a bit, so I haven't really seen his attacks much. Maybe his eye goes glowy or something. I don't know. I don't even know what this is from, even though I've got the friggin' servant and I use him so much. Uh, but, oh well. It still looks uh, kind of cool. It does look a lot better in the picture. I'll give it that because they can do the whole angling thing and get it right and perfect and, you know, edit the lighting and stuff. It's a bit different in person. It, it I don't know. For me, I feel like it doesn't work as well. Uh, just the hat kind of looks like it's, you know, just on his head. Not really. He's wearing it. It's just on top of his head, if that makes any sense. Uh, sadly, it is not magnetic, so it just kind of sits there. Which is a bit of a shame, but oh well, that's okay. But, if you look down here, he does have arms, but uh, I didn't put anything on him. So, you can put him on if you want, but you're not going to see him, so why bother? Uh, also, the way the like cape cloak thing works is, you pretty much just take off the arms on the main body here. Let's, I'll show it off. So, you take off the main arms, and then you just, you just slide it in. That's literally it. And then, bam, you've got Dante's body now. And it does fit pretty snugly. It doesn't feel like it's gonna drop out or anything. So, you'll be fine with that. So, yeah, just shove it in and you're good to go. 
But yeah, that's going to do it for this pose, so let's move on to the final pose. Alright, here is the final pose for Dante's. So I did debate up about which one to go for the final one. I was debating between this one as well as the one with the cool arm and the crazy look. But in the end, I chose this one. It just feels more like Dante's. I don't know why. This one, I just, I like it. It feels like, you know, it captures his character well. Which is uh, exactly what you want in an android in a figure. So this is the one I ended up going with. So pretty much the way this works is normal body and everything. Just use the arms. Uh, what arm was that? That was the arm uh, that used that held the coffee. But you use the hand that was just on the default body. And then you use the arm that holds uh, the the saucepan. And use the hand that holds the hat. The hat does have like a little cut out. I don't know how well you can see it. But it does have a cut out over there. Just for it to, you know, attach onto the cuffs of his sleeve. And, uh, you know, fit well. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And then you just position him, get the legs right, get the head right, and there you go. That's pretty much it. I think it's just kind of classy, you know. And it's it's got that feel of Dante's being your friend, you know. Always got your back uh, when you need him. Uh, that smiling face and that cool demeanor of his taking off his hat as well. I did really want to include his hat in a pose somehow. Uh, but I, I'm not a big fan of how it sits on his head in person it just doesn't look right compared to the pictures but this is a perfect roundabout way because he's not Dante's without the hat it feels like super iconic to him so I had him use the hat hand it worked out perfectly like that so yeah that's gonna do it for this part of the video let's get on to the review portion um so yeah I'm gonna take off a point for that hat because it is it doesn't look fantastic so I'm gonna take off one for that but other than that, everything else is perfect about him. Everything is really cool. There's a lot of extra pieces that you'd go to expect from a deluxe edition. Got some nice poses. It captures his character very well. I really do like that blue arm. I wish I could use it somewhere else. I don't know. If I ever get into doubles, I'll probably probably use this one somewhere. But it, it really is a cool effect part, and I think they did it really well, which is exactly what you want to see. But yeah, so Dante's is going to get a 9 out of 10. So overall, a great review for a great servant. Hopefully you all have great luck when it comes to rolling for Dante's. If you are going to roll for him in FGO, I wish you the best of luck. Hopefully you've watched this video and uh, maybe gotten inspired. He is a great servant, especially with the Scotty system. In fact, he might be the best servant for the Scotty system. Uh, in a lot of people's opinions. But, you know, I... I've just got him, so I've been using him, so he's the best servant I've got at least. I'll give him that. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe for more Android content, check out the Patreon if you want to support me directly, and I will see you all in the next one. Alright, bye!